Hi everyone, welcome back. This last effect that we're going to talk about, uh, which again concerns to the acidity and helps us determine acid strengths, is the orbital or hybridization effect. We've already talked about atom effects, resonance effects, and inductive effects. Uh, now, orbital or hybridization effect, this has to do with the orbital which uh, uh, the orbital which is occupied by the electrons. Now the electrons could be the lone pair or the ones that or the ones that give rise to the negative charge. Okay, so it has to, it concerns with the orbital in which that electron is present. And that actually goes back to hybridization because the hybridization is what determines where the, or, where the electrons are going to be present. So uh, to explain this, let's look at some very simple molecules. Okay, so if we have CH3, CH2, and if we think about the hydrogen that's connected to that carbon, okay, there are th three hydrogens. We are looking at one of the car uh, hydrogens and we're going to treat these as acids. Uh, for the second example, we're going to think about CH2 double bond C uh, and then essentially CH and then one of these hydrogens that's connected to that carbon. And then finally, we have CH triple bond CH, so hydrogen connected to that carbon. So it's basically a hydrogen that's connected to the carbon. We are using this as an example, but this can be applied, and this the principle can be extended to other molecules, other that are not carbons, whether it's a nitrogen or an oxygen, it would still apply. So if we treat all of these as acids, uh, uh, and then I will list the pKa values, again, approximate pKa values. That's about 50. This is around 44 or so, and this is around 25. Okay, so those are some approximate numbers for our pKa values that uh, we have. Now, uh, the conjugate base for each of these, because again, we're talking about acidity and we wanna understand this order of acidity. The structure of the acid does not help us understand that. So we have to draw the conjugate base and then understand the stability of the conjugate base. Okay, so if I draw the conjugate base for each one of these, we're going to get CH2 with a negative charge on that carbon. We get CH2, double bond CH, with a negative charge on that carbon. And then we have CH triple bond C with a negative charge on that carbon. So I removed a proton from each of these molecules, assuming that it's an acid. Okay, now let's talk about where this lone pair is present or the electron pair is present in each of these molecules. Which orbital does it occupy? How do I know that? How do I figure that out? You can go back to your parent acid. You could also do it here. Honestly, it doesn't matter. You could just do it here on the conjugate base. Maybe that is better. Let's just do it on the conjugate base. So if I were to predict hybridization of the carbon in which this lone pair is present, okay? If I had to predict it or determine the hybridization of this carbon, I'm going to count two atoms Carbon is the third atom, so we're counting the number of groups, and that lone pair would be the fourth group. And so this carbon has four groups around it, so it is sp3 hybridized. Similarly, this carbon has three groups around it, so it is sp2 hybridized, and this carbon is sp hybridized. That means as we move across these carbons, the hybridization changes. And since we are counting this lone pair of electrons in determining or for determining the hybridization of these atoms, what that means is that lone pair is present in one of those hybridized orbitals. That means this lone pair is present or it occupies an sp3 hybrid orbital 
This lone pair occupies an sp2 hybrid orbital, and that lone pair occupies an sp hybrid orbital. So if there are any differences in stability for these conjugate bases, they should arise from this difference in hybridization. And we've talked about this before. We know what the differences in these hybridization states are. SP3 hybridization has a 25% S character, okay? 25% S character here because there are four orbitals total and one of them is S, -S so it's a 25% S. This is a 33% S and SP hybridization is a 20, uh, Sorry, uh, SP hybridization is a 50% S character because there are only two orbitals, one S and one P, when we did the hybridization, and one of those orbitals is an S orbital, so it's a 50% S character. And what we already know is as S character increases, the stability of charge increases, okay? As the S character increases, it basically, uh, the electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus, so they're held tightly by the nucleus. Or the other way of looking at it is, the electronegativity of the atom changes. And that is in fact true. The electronegativity of the carbon atom is not a constant. It depends on the hybridization of the carbon atom. And an sp hybridized carbon is the most electronegative and an sp3 hybridized carbon is the least electronegative. So basically the stability increases. So this among all of these is the most stable. And that stability is explained by the SP nature of hybridization. And so since this conjugate base is the most stable, what that means is the corresponding acid is the strongest acid. And that is what is basically reflected in the pKa values for these molecules, okay? So that's the last effect where we can use hybridization uh, or the orbital where the electron is present to understand uh, which is a stronger acid uh, compared to the other ones. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. So in subsequent video, we're going to look at some examples uh, where we solve out and uh, we basically use uh, some or all of these uh, different effects to, to arrive, at your, uh, arrive at your answer. Okay, bye.